voices echoing down They're good Are keeping me down Tell me I'm so lost to be found And I know it's in my mind There every time And they're convincing me with lies But I'm fine I'm Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to another great day here at Heart Conditions. It is Thursday, rolling towards the weekend, and it's going to be a fantastic weekend at the Pentecostals. We've got uh, our Spring Festival coming up. We're going to be um, having a great time this weekend, just our 11 o'clock service, no Sunday school hour, um, but it's going to be a great time. We're going to have a good time with that. And today, in Heart Conditions, we are talking again about the church. Uh, starting to bring this towards a wrap-up for the week. Um, and as we do, today we're talking about um, the eternal. Um, what does it mean to be a part of the whole? What, is it, what are the benefits of it, right? Um, because we are uh, very, um, I don't know what you'd say about that, because we are very connected with uh, the idea of what's in it for me, um, and not always in a bad way, sometimes in a good way. We want to be a part of something bigger than ourselves, and that's all right. Um, sometimes we kind of wonder, you know, okay, we're part of the church, but what does that mean? Um, the fact is that being a part of the church means you're a part of an eternal plan. You're a part of something bigger than yourself, something that's quite incredible, um, if you really think about it, now we all have a, a part to play. I think it was Shakespeare that says we're all actors on a play. Well, while that that's probably uh, a little bit dramatic, uh, the truth is we are all part of something bigger than ourselves. When you're a part of the church, you're a part of something eternal. The problem with people who have a hard time committing to God and committing to the church is they have no eternal viewpoint. Right. And so today I really want to talk about you having an eternal viewpoint uh, about you um, having something, a viewpoint that's beyond you and beyond just where you're at. When you buy into the body of Christ and when you become a part of the body of Christ, you begin to look at, at the big picture of things, not just the small picture of things. You begin to see uh, that everything you do matters. Showing up matters. Uh, giving matters, uh, going matters, all of it's important and it's all connected to a bigger plan than what I've got and what I can do on my own. And that's very important. Seriously, you need to think about it. Your existence didn't just begin uh, the moment you, know, you were born or the moment that uh, before that. The truth is you were in the mind of God from the very foundation of the earth, according to the word of God. He knew you before you were even born. And that is an incredible thing. You need to think about this. And he knew when you were going to be born. He knew uh, th that eventually you would find this church and become a part of the church, his body. And he designed it that way, which means he has a plan and a purpose for you that's larger than you can imagine. It's bigger than you could understand. 
There are no accidents with God. I was talking with my good friend, uh, Brother Ralph, the other day about God appointments, that, that there are no accidents. When we, meet, when we meet people, it's a part of a bigger purpose and a bigger plan. And I just happen to believe that when uh, God arranges a divine appointment, that there is going to be something involved. Now, there's, there's two parts to that. There's God's part, which is God has a purpose and a plan for you. And then there's our part to understand. And our part to understand is this, is that it is our responsibility to buy in and get involved in it. If we don't buy in to God's plan and purpose, if we don't buy in to what God is doing, uh, it is possible for our life. Um, from the idea of the world that you were an accident, and that you're not good enough uh, for the kingdom of heaven is just ludicrous. First of all, I want to uh, combat this idea that I'm not, I'm not good enough. God can't use me. I, I'm sorry. The Bible is replete with examples of God using people that others said you're not capable of using. That others would try to disqualify and say they're not good enough. And God over and over and over used them in his purpose and his will. He used them how he wanted to. Sorry, my dog just decided to try and bite me here. Um, <laughs> but he decided to use them in a way that they weren't uniquely suited for. And he began to turn them into victory after victory for the children of Israel, uh, into growth uh, for the church. Um, God is a uh, just a master at doing that. So the idea that we're not good enough and, and we're disqualified from it um, is, is, is just preposterous. You need to understand that God's purpose for you is bigger than this. Uh, it's bigger than you realize. It's bigger than you know. It's bigger than you could even understand. Um, the more I think about it, the more honored I am to be a part of his kingdom right? There's no going back for me. I'm not going to quit the church. I'm not going to walk away. I'm not going to, you know, there's, 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 I don't have times where it's like, oh, I don't know that I can do this. You know, I have times when I say, you know, in my flesh, I don't, I don't know that I'm qualified to do this. I don't know that I'm good enough to do it. But if you called me, if I'm still here, if I'm still kicking, then there is something that you are going to do through me because your word said it, not because I hope it or think it, but because your word declares it. And so I want to encourage us this week. I want to encourage you today uh, that you would allow God to use you how he wants to use you and to do what he wants to do in your life. Um, now, here's the problem is that we don't. And another thing we fight is we don't think it matters. We don't feel like. Um, what we do in the church, what we do in life matters all that much. And the truth is, it does. Um, a lot of people try to treat the church as it's, it's an option. Uh, it's an outdated way to connect with God, and I can do it better on my own. You don't understand that the eternal is found within the church. Work. It's important, the Bible says, not to forsake the gathering together of yourselves. And that's not an optional thing, and that's not a when you feel like it. That is a mandate from God. And it's no wonder people get all this. I've, I've watched it over time. People will stay home for a little bit, uh, especially with this year of the pandemic. And I'm, I'm just going to speak to it. And uh, if you don't like it, well, get over it and go pray through. But the truth is, people have stayed home on their couches. And they feel like, oh, I'm good. I'm good with God. And then they're like, well, I don't think I'm going to come back to church. Or they get disgruntled with the church. And the truth is they don't even know the church. They've been gone for six months. They've been gone for three months. They've been gone outside of the church for a while. And they're all disgruntled about nothing. And the truth is, is that they have lost eternal viewpoint and perspective because they're sitting at home on their couch. So all they can have is temporary perspective. I don't care how much online time you have if you're not connected to the body you're not living in the eternal being a part of the body is about being a part of the eternal you cannot be a part of the eternal on your own and the idea 
that the church isn't good enough for you is ludicrous. You know it, and I know it, because you know where you were when God found you. You were a hot mess, just like the rest of us. And then the idea that you're not good enough for the church means that God must make mistakes. All of these things are ridiculous. The, the fact is, when we see the church from God's perspective, we're not going to criticize it. We're not going to tear it down because we will begin to appreciate God's design and we will be left in awe and wonder. And then we will begin to see our part to play in that. Today, as we begin to bring this to an end, I want you to understand the power of the church, its eternal and divine purpose, and understand that God has something great in store for you and your life in the church, not apart from the church, but in the church. Today, I hope that you will get a divine perspective and God will begin to bless your life. You have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow.